Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another political rant. Um, actually, this is more of a state of the situation rant rather than a political rant. Um, that's because I'm having a small problem with my Let's Play recorder, so I'm doing these for now. Um, I know this isn't my core audience, and to those uh, people who have found this these recordings and have given support, hey, that's really cool. And even to the people who flame the living snot out of me, you know, hey, you're cool too, whatever. Um, today, uh, I was going over some news things, and I saw something really interesting, and that was this new Ponzi scheme, uh, where five charged were, call were called in the quote-unquote dream home uh, investor scheme, which was actually a nightmare. And, and I'd just like to comment a second, and I'm not uh, in any way saying these, people a these people's actions should be forgiven, because they were thieves. Um, but the problem is, we it, it's our fault. It's all our fault, um, as a society, uh, that things like this are there. Um, partially because uh, a lot of extremely well-off people say, well, people just want to get rich without doing the hard work. Oh, please. I mean, seriously, please. Uh, most rich people didn't get their money by hard work. They got it the old-fashioned way. They inherited it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the problem is, our society as a whole puts so much on the worth of a person, as far as their financial worth, that people who don't have money start to feel trapped. Um, I kind of feel that way myself, trapped. Um, I'll give you a little bit of my history, uh, and, and pretty much why the... Uh, why our capitalist society um, more or less destroyed me. Um, I'm going to get a little personal here, um, but uh, sure, why not? Um, I was really the first person in my family to um, get a college degree. Um, and I didn't have a college fund. Um, my parents did help me as much as they could, but uh, my father is a retired disabled American veteran, and he uh, didn't make a lot of money. Um, we had no health insurance, uh, aside from what the VA gave us, but that cut off when I was like 18. Um, so I grew up really poor and dealing with uh, a lot of the problems that poor people deal with that a lot of people don't really understand how serious a concern they were. Um, the first was having no medical insurance, I guess, as a kid. Uh, I couldn't do any sports I wanted to um, because there was too much of a risk of getting hurt. Uh, not that it mattered. I was kind of in a wheelchair for uh, most of my childhood. Um, and, yeah, it, it really sucked. So when I did get old enough to go to college... Um, mostly I was on my own. I, I got to Arizona and set everything up. Uh, started out by having to use credit cards and uh, borrowed money wherever I could and student loans um, out at the wazoo. And, and it was possibly my own fault, but I believe the hype that the, the only way to get ahead is to have an education, and that was all important. And, and growing up poor, I did want to know what it was like to, you know, kind of be well off. Um, and things were going all right, uh, and I was keeping up with payments and everything, uh, until I got sick. Um, I got diagnosed with cancer, um, while I was in Arizona, and, uh, the rules of the game changed. Um, having no medical insurance and getting the news that you have cancer is probably one of the worst things that, that you can have happen. Um, I was in a lot of pain. Um, I couldn't always afford the medications that, that I was supposed to be on. Um, there were many nights that we'd be scrounging change to try to get some food. Um, more than once, our electricity ended up getting, being cut off because, um, I just, I didn't have it. Um, and I went from being, you know, I, I literally went to the point where I was, without the, you know, 
um, help of friends who who were amazing um, friends like Rob and Alan who uh, let me stay at their place and didn't bother the fact that I really couldn't help with rent for a while and everything else um, without their help I would not have made it through and uh, I was told by doctors that the, although I needed proper treatment um, they wouldn't give it to me because I couldn't afford it and had no insurance so I went through hell all because of money um, and so not having money in this world in America at least not having a lot of money is, is, is terrible it, it really is and that's partially because we, we put so much faith in this capitalistic ideal that really isn't true um, I don't even think I'll be putting any funny messages in this broadcast because this isn't a funny topic um but yeah, there's... If you've never been poor, you don't know what it's like. It's simple as that. If you've never been poor, you have no idea. Um, if you've lived your life always being minimum wage... Or not minimum wage. If you've lived your life always being medium income uh, and had a college fund and had health insurance and had this and had that and had decent vehicles and, and if you've always had that, no offense, shut up because you don't know a damn thing about being poor. Um, I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm not saying that to be cruel. I'm saying it because it's the truth. You don't know. You don't. And there's people who say, well, I started my own company, and I worked my way up, and, and therefore I know what it's like. No, you don't. You don't know what it's like to earn a goddamn thing. Because I know how hard it is to start a business. Because, see, that was my plan. I wanted to start my own game design firm. That was the thing I wanted to do with my whole life. That's what I went to college for. That's what I have degrees in. That's what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, because my medical bills destroyed me so badly financially, I had to declare bankruptcy. And there's no way. I will never have my own company now. And I've had to accept that. I'm a teacher now, and, and I love teaching. Don't Don't get me wrong. Um, it's a very rewarding, but I'll never have the money to do what I want to do, and, and I know this. I'll never have my own company. I'll never have a credit rating. I'm never, more than likely never going to own my own home, and those are things that I pretty much have to look forward to. Um, I don't have a vehicle right now, and due to the fact that I can't uh, ever establish credit, or I can't establish credit in like 7 to 10 years, I'll probably never have a car. Um and pretty much my entire existence is going to be relegated to this tiny little town and it's all because of how our capitalistic society is set up if we had had something like socialized medicine my life would not have been destroyed my dreams would not have been ripped apart and taken from me the way they were and and I'm not whining and I'm not crying but the fact of the matter is I know I know what it's like and I've heard so many people say so many horrible things about those who don't have money that I felt someone had to stand up and say, you know, those people who don't have money suffer a lot worse than you think. And a lot of them aren't on welfare. And a lot of them aren't not willing to work. And a lot of them aren't stupid. I'm not stupid. I'm willing to work. I work my butt off every day. I'm a teacher. I'm educated. Um, and the fact of the matter is, just because you're poor doesn't mean, you know, it just means you might have been struck by bad luck. And in my case, my bad luck was something that a nationalized health care program would have prevented. Would have prevented. This is the only country that I know of in the entire world where you can actually die because you don't have money. And do I want to live in a country where people value money over somebody's life no no I don't I don't want to live in that country but I love the American ideal which is that anyone can succeed but I do think it's time for us to have some reforms for you know some some of the people out there who are saying oh socialism is bad to shut up and realize that some elements of socialism such as socialized medicine are actually really damn good Granted, it's a little worse for the people that can afford, you know, the very expensive doctors and whatnot. But for the people who can't, it's probably their only chance at survival in some situations. 
And if you can save one life at the cost of a measly couple percentage raise on your income taxes, then you should do it. And if you're not willing to do that, then you might as well just go ahead and jump off a bridge because you're a lousy excuse for a human being anyway. Anyway, that's this week's rant. Join me again next week, and hopefully I'll get my player fixed so I can start doing Let's Plays again. In any case, be safe, be well, and have a good day.